of the means whereby god from the beginning hath revealed both his covenants unto mankind question how many ways are there whereby god from the beginning hath revealed all his will that is the doctrine of both covenants of works and grace unto mankind answer they are two question which be they answer the first is a lively voice the second is the scripture question what callest thou a lively voice answer the first means of revelation whereby god partly by his own mouth and partly by men hath manifested the whole doctrine of both covenants to his church from time to time question what were the instruments of that lively voice from the beginning answer first god himself spake sometimes by his son in the form or likeness of man appearing to the fathers sometimes by his spirit inwardly in the heart secondly the lively voice of angels was heard thirdly the lively voice of men first of the fathers then of moses and the prophets after that of john the baptist until christ then followed christ himself manifested in the flesh last of all the lively voice of the apostles question this kind of revelation which was by a lively voice of all those whom you have named was it by inspiration and altogether free from error answer concerning the lively voice of god himself of christ and of the angels there is no question and as concerning men whose lively voice god hath used from the beginning of the world hitherto in revealing his will to his church they truly albeit they were sinful men and in part only regenerated notwithstanding in the delivery of the doctrine of the truth of both covenants they were so extraordinarily governed and inspired by the holy spirit of god that they could by no means err question dost thou mean then that all men as many as have been from the beginning of the world hitherto by whose mouth god hath spoken to his church were men extraordinarily endued with extraordinary gifts of the holy ghost and confirmed by miracles answer i mean even so for prophecy in time past came not by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the spirit of god two peter one twenty one question at what time began this lively voice in the church answer it began even in the first creation of man question how long hath the lively voice of god and men who could not err in delivering the doctrine of truth continued in the church of god answer it hath been from the beginning of the world even to the death of the apostles all which time there was almost no age wherein at least some one holy man of god was not extraordinarily stirred up who could not err in delivering the doctrine of the truth question why do you say almost was there any intermission at all answer truly there was but i will name only some more notable intermissions which may be gathered out of the holy scriptures first in the age of the patriarchs it is observed that there was an intermission in terach's time who was the father of abraham for albeit he retained some grounds of truth received from his fathers notwithstanding he became an apostate and an idolater as is manifest by the history second there was an intermission also when the people lived in egypt for from the death of the sons of jacob even to the departure out of egypt ezekiel testifieth chapter twenty verse eight that all the people were fallen from god to the idols of the egyptians lastly there was an intermission from malachi the last of the prophets until john baptist in all which time no prophet was raised up notwithstanding the word of god was continued amongst the people of the jews by high priests and the ordinary ministry but not without corruptions so that at the coming of christ for the more part the doctrine of truth is now corrupted question ought not the lively voice of god which is not subject to error be continued in the church until the coming of christ because you said that this lively voice did continue in the church till the coming of the apostles only answer the lively voice of christ continues in the church i confess but not the lively voice either of god or of extraordinary men such as were the fathers prophets and apostles but only the lively voice of ordinary men of pastors and doctors who both may err and do err whensoever they depart never so little from the prescript word of the prophets and apostles question but god hath given a greater measure of his holy spirit to his church which is now under christ than ever he gave to the old church 
Therefore, if in the old church there was a lively voice which could not err, how much more shall there be now in the church of Christ a lively voice which cannot err? Answer. It is true indeed that together with this full revelation which is contained in the writings of the apostles, a more full spirit was given to the church of Christ, which now is, than was given to the old church. But hence it followeth not that either the church or the pastors and doctors in the church are so governed with that spirit that they cannot at all err in delivering the truth. For this was the extraordinary gift of the Holy Ghost, which was given but for a time. But the gift of the Spirit, which was given to the Church of Christ since the times of the Apostles, is ordinary and perpetual, to wit the gift of sanctification, illumination, and regeneration. Question. The Church, then, which now is, seems to be in a worse case than the old Church was, which had the lively voice of God, and of men which could not err. Answer. That doth not follow, for this scripture of the prophets and apostles, which now the church hath, doth not err in doctrine, and contains also a most full and clear revelation of the truth. Question. Albeit I should grant the condition of our church to be better than that of the old church which was before Moses, and which had the tradition and use only of the lively voice, and that very imperfect and obscure, notwithstanding I see not how the church was not in better case, which was after Moses, even to the coming of Christ, as having not only the use of tradition and of a living voice, but also of the prophetical scripture as a light shining in a dark place. Answer. Truly that church had both, that is, both the sound of a lively voice and of the scripture and written word of God, but neither perfect nor absolute. But this scripture, which our church alone hath, contains a most full and plain revelation, for even one form or manner and kind of revelation which is perfect and full must be more excellent than two which are both imperfect, or which contain an imperfect revelation of the truth. Question. But there is no man who would not say it were better with this our church if it had some lively voice which in speaking and answering to all controversies might not err. Answer. They have Moses, the prophets, and apostles, that is, the writings of Moses, of the prophets, and of the apostles, and those truly not only sufficient but most perfect, whence only if they cannot learn the truth by them and decide and end all controversies, they will not be instructed with the lively voice of any extraordinary man. Howbeit, as I have said before, the lively voice was to continue only so long in the church as something was wanting to the full declaration of the mystery of Christ, so that if now there should be any need of the lively voice either of God or of some extraordinary man in the church of Christ, that truly should plainly argue that the revelation of the truth and mystery of Christ is not perfect as yet nor accomplished. Question. You conclude then that since the Apostles' time there hath been no lively voice heard in the church which could not err? Answer. Yea, truly. Question. Why did a lively voice not subject to error continue in the church all that time which was from Adam to the Apostles? Answer. To speak nothing of the will of God, with the which alone we ought to rest contented, First, the condition of the church did require this continuance, and then the measure of the revelation that then was. Question. Why the condition of the church? Answer. Because the visible church, in all that time, which was from Adam to the apostles, both in place more straight as being shut up in one family or in one nation, and was, by reason of age, weaker or not so well grown. For the church before Christ, if I may so speak, was either as a child or as a young man. Question. What then? Answer. The lively voice doth more easily reach or extend itself to a church, which is in place more straight, and to the saints fewer in number, and the church, being as yet unexperienced by reason of the age of it, and less grown, had need of the lively voice of a teacher, none otherwise than children have need of the lively voice of a master, who as it were stammereth with them. But after the coming of Christ, when the church was sufficiently instructed by the lively voice of Christ and of his apostles, and now come to man's estate, there was no more heard any lively voice either of God or of men extraordinary. Question. Why did the measure of revelation require this? 
answer because all that time which was from adam to the apostles there remained as yet something more clearly and more manifestly to be revealed and the revelation of the doctrine was in several ages made more manifest still as pertaining to the substance of it and as long as something remained to be more clearly revealed so long a lively voice was to continue for every new revelation ought first to begin with a lively voice question seeing that the last and most full revelation was by the lively voice of christ and his apostles hath there ever since been heard any lively voice either of god or of any extraordinary man answer none at all question do you gather by these things which you have spoken concerning the causes of the continuance of a lively voice in the church what was the use of it heretofore in the church answer yea truly for the use of it was first in respect of the church itself to give it instruction while it was yet so small for place and so young in knowledge next in respect of revelation to deliver it from time to time more clearly and evidently unto the people question by this use of a lively voice which you have here mentioned it seems that this kind of revelation which was by a lively voice was the more simple and the more familiar and the more imperfect and therefore the more fit for persons and things that were of like imperfection answer it is even so as you have said question hitherto i have heard you speak concerning a lively voice now i would hear something of you concerning the subject of it what say you then was taught all that time by a lively voice answer in all that time and in every age the self-same and the whole truth of god was delivered by a lively voice question wherefore then said you that the perfect manifestation of that mystery of godliness was not accomplished till the apostle's time answer by that fulness and perfection i understood not the substance of the doctrine itself but the quality that is the clearness of one and the same doctrine for the mystery of christ was in the church and was manifested in some measure from adam unto christ and the apostles but if the comparison be made of times it may be said to be shut and hidden in all ages before the coming of christ question was the purity of the heavenly doctrine sufficiently conserved and kept by a lively voice answer the history shows plainly that the doctrine delivered by a lively voice was often corrupted and adulterated question how then was it restored answer it seemed good to god afterward by new revelations to restore the purity of his word decayed to conserve and keep it and to give a more full declaration of it question was the purity of doctrine sufficiently preserved and kept so answer not so verily and therefore it seemed good to god at length to add hereunto the written word question are there no other causes of writing the holy scripture answer there are for first the condition of the church required that the scripture should be added unto the lively voice and next the measure also of revelation question why the condition of the church answer because at length in moses's time the church began to be both in place more large as being spread throughout a whole nation and to grow greater and riper in years for the time from moses unto christ was as it were the time of the middle age or the younger years of the church question what then answer the written word therefore was first in respect both of place and ripeness of age for both a whole nation is more easily taught by writing than by voice and the age which is more ripe is more capable of that doctrine which is delivered by writing that is by that kind of revelation which is not so familiar and simple and by writing doth more easily conceive any man's meaning question why doth the measure of revelation require the written word answer because whereas before moses the revelation of the mystery of godliness was small and very obscure it seemed not good to the lord to cause it straightways to be written to the intent it might be kept for posterity but where in moses's time the revelation began to be much more clear than before then it seemed good unto god to commit it to writing to the intent it might be reserved and remain for those which should come after for that which is more perfect and full that we are to write to this end that it may remain both for us and our posterity but that which is more imperfect that we do not esteem worthy the writing or to be reserved unto posterity 
question before you go any further i would have you declare unto me the ages of the church whereof you have so oft made mention answer i will do so question how many ages then say you are there of the church answer three the first was from adam unto moses which was the infancy and childhood of the church the second from moses unto christ which was the youth or middle age of the church the third from christ and his apostles even unto the end which may be called the ripe age of the church if it be compared with the ages past for otherwise we are not men grown until we be gathered together with christ our head in heaven question do you mean then that god hath respect always of these three ages in his proceeding with his church answer i mean so indeed for that i may so speak he hath tempered these three things proportionally to these three ages of the church to wit first the measure of revelation secondly his holy spirit thirdly the manner of revelation question declare i pray you more particularly what you have said answer to the infancy and childhood of the church he gave the least measure of revelation to wit first the first principles of religion only secondly the least measure of the holy spirit to wit that which was proportionable to the revelation thirdly one only kind of revelation which was by lively voice as being the most fit for the instruction of infants and of such as were weak in the faith question i understand what you say concerning the first age of the church now i would have you speak concerning the middle age which you call the youth of it and to apply these three things mentioned to it in like manner answer to the middle age of the church he gave first a greater measure of revelation secondly so to speak a greater portion of the holy spirit thirdly a double kind of revelation the lively voice and the scripture the lively voice i say because as yet it was but weak and the written word because it was in age better grown and so more capable in some sort of the word written for god hath tempered these two kinds of revelations together and of both hath made a middle kind of revelation according to the time and age which we call the middle and as it were the temperate age question you have spoken of the first and second age of the church now i pray you speak of the third answer to the third age of the church which i call the manly or ripe age he gave first a full measure of revelation secondly a most plentiful effusion of the holy ghost thirdly both those kinds of revelations and that now truly containing a full and perfect revelation he taught it by lively voice for a certain time and after this he added the writings of the apostles and when as the mystery of our salvation was fully revealed by that lively voice first and then that full revelation was written ever since there hath been no more use of the lively voice of any extraordinary prophet or apostle but the scriptures written first by the prophets and after by the apostles remained only without any lively voice which could not err question where must we begin to count the third age of the church answer not so much from the coming of christ and the sending of his apostles to all nations as from that time when the apostles ceased to speak with lively voice as well to the jews as to the gentiles for even then the church catholic came to man's estate and full growth and then the church began to understand and to learn the will of god by the written word as being a more accurate and perfect manner of revelation the time then which was from the coming of christ until the death of the apostles was as it were a passage from the middle age of the church unto the full growth and ripeness of the same question i understand what you say concerning the causes of addition of the written word to the lively voice and of the several ages of the church now i would have you speak something concerning the scripture or of the writing of god's word answer i will do so question what then call you writing or scripture answer i call scripture or writing the second kind of revelation whereby god either by himself or by the means of men extraordinarily revealed those things which already had been delivered by a lively voice before to wit in that first kind of revelation question who then were they who ever since the beginning have written answer first god himself next men moses the prophets and the apostles question this kind of revelation which was by writing was it not subject to error like as that kind which was by a lively voice 
Answer. No, truly, for concerning that which God himself did write, there is no question, and touching men they were so extraordinarily inspired and governed by the Spirit of God, that in writing they could not err at all. Question. When began it then to be written? Answer. In Moses's time. Question. How long did the word written continue in the church? Answer. The scripture, or the act of writing, continued from Moses even to the apostles, all which time there was almost no age wherein extraordinarily someone was not stirred up, who in delivering the doctrine of truth by writing could not err. Question. You think otherwise of the scripture itself than of the act of writing? Answer. I do so, for the scripture itself, or that which is now written by Moses, the prophets, and apostles, yet continues in the church, and shall continue unto the second coming of Christ. Question. Was there any intermission of writing the word from Moses unto the apostles? Answer. There was, for it appeareth in all that time which was from Malachi to John the Baptist, none was stirred up either prophet or writer inspired by God, for the books of the Maccabees be not given by inspiration, as we shall show hereafter. Question. You said that writing continued in the church until the time of the apostles. Ought it not then to continue unto the end? Answer. Like as, since the Apostles' time, there is no lively voice heard in the church which can be said to be so governed by the Holy Ghost that it cannot err at all. So, since the Apostles, nothing is written in the church which may worthily be called or said to be given by inspiration. Question. What then do you think of so many writings of godly and learned men which have been published since the times of the Apostles, from time to time, to the great good and profit of the church? Answer. Verily, I think of the writings of the pastors and doctors in the church as I think of their preaching, to wit, that both be subject to error, and neither is so governed by the Holy Ghost, but in delivering the truth of God they may err. Question. It seemeth then that the condition of the church, which since the time of the apostles, is not so good as having neither the lively voice, as is aforesaid, nor the writings, as now you speak, of those very men who in delivering the truth cannot err. Answer. It hath the scripture of the prophets and apostles, which, as pertaining to the substance of revelation, is full, and as touching the kind and form of revelation, it is given by inspiration, and not subject to error. Out of the which scripture, whosoever do not learn all things which are necessary to faith and salvation, assuredly such would not receive from the mouth of God himself, openly speaking in an audible and intelligible voice, the doctrine and instruction of faith and salvation. Question. Wherefore did the Lord so continue to record his will by writing in the church all that time which was from Moses to the apostles? Answer. There are the same causes of the continuance thereof, as are of the addition of the lively voice unto writing, for both the condition of the church and the measure of revelation required the same. Question. Why the condition of the church? Answer. Because the church continually increased and grew, as in numbers, so in knowledge. Question. What then? A. The greater number and riper knowledge do require this, that the word be written. Question. Why the measure of revelation? Answer. Because the revelation of the doctrine of salvation was from time to time made more clear and manifest, even unto the times of Christ and his apostles, at which time it was in the end complete and perfected. For it was meet that every revelation manifested more clearly and fully should be recorded in writing to this end, that it might be surely kept and delivered to posterities. Question. Can ye gather by these things the use of the continuance of Scripture in the Church of God? Answer. Yea, truly. Question. What is then the use of it? Answer. To pass by the consideration of the purity of doctrine, the first use was in respect of the Church for the instruction thereof, as being now in place more ample and large, and in knowledge more perfect. Secondly, it was in respect of the revelation of the doctrine itself, that it might comprehend and keep it more fully and clearly. Question. By this use of scripture or writing which you give, it seems that this kind of revelation, which is by writing, is somewhat more perfect and high, as that which is best agreeing and fitting to persons and things that are more perfect. Answer. It is even so. Question. Thus far, then, for writing or scripture... 
now i would have you declare something unto me concerning the subject of this writing and of the matter itself which is written answer as touching the substance the very same is written which was before delivered by the lively voice question i pray you speak in order unto me of the subject or argument in scripture written first by god himself secondly by men by moses the prophets and apostles answer i will do so question what then hath god written answer the sum of the doctrine of the covenant of works and of the law even the very same which he had delivered first by a lively voice to the fathers and to moses question what hath moses written answer all the celestial doctrine which he had received partly of the fathers by tradition partly of god himself who spake mouth to mouth with him for so the scripture speaketh partly he had learned of the holy ghost by an inward inspiration and to speak in a word whatsoever had happened to him and to all the people in his lifetime for the space of one hundred and twenty years all these things he committed to writing and gave to the people question did moses then write whatsoever true doctrine was delivered from the beginning of the world to that time answer moses omitted no point of true doctrine which at any time had been delivered concerning either faith or manners for from the beginning unto that very time one and the same doctrine of truth as touching the substance was taught full and whole in all ages the difference only was in the measure of the revelation of it that it is accidental and moses delivered this doctrine fully and wholly by lively voice more clearly and manifestly than ever before then after this it was recorded in writing question what did the prophets write who followed moses every one in their time and order answer the same and all as touching the substance which moses had written before the difference only was herein that every one by revelation did add a more clear and manifest interpretation as the bright morning star did approach more near question what have the apostles written after the prophets answer all and the same which from the beginning of the world in all ages before them was both by lively and audible voice delivered and written they first also by lively voice delivered the same and after committed it to writing question do you then make no difference betwixt the writings of the prophets and of the apostles answer in the matter and substance none in the clearness and perspicuity thereof very great for the scripture of the apostles containeth the same revelation of the mystery which was declared from the beginning of the world but most fully and most clearly question i have heard you speak concerning both kinds of revelation considered without comparison now i would have you to compare together the lively voice and writing that by comparison it may appear whether it is of greater dignity and authority answer i will compare them together the lively voice and scripture are compared either in respect of substance and of matter itself which is revealed by these means or in respect of the kinds of the revelation of it if comparison be made in regard of the matter or substance they must needs be both equal and alike seeing that the matter in either is one and the same but if you compare the kinds of revelation together it cannot truly be denied but that the first and better place is due to the lively voice seeing that the lively voice is both in respect of time more ancient and was before the organs or instruments thereof for the mouth is an instrument more worthy and to be preferred before the hand and is a kind of teaching more familiar and more fit for the capacity of such as are more rude and ignorant albeit also in some respects writing is to be preferred before the lively voice for it is a more perfect and accurate kind of revelation fit to instruct those that are more perfect and to keep the truth more firmly in the meanwhile it cannot be denied but that in other respects they are both alike for they have both spoken and written the same thing and in the same manner to it as being guided and moved by the holy ghost and inspired of god two peter one twenty one to timothy three sixteen to conclude seeing that now the lively voice by the will of god hath ceased and in the place of it the scripture hath succeeded so that whole dignity of the lively voice before mentioned is and ought worthily to be ascribed and referred unto the scripture or written word of god
question do you mean then that the prophetical and apostolical scripture ought to be now in as great account with us as the lively voice of god himself and of extraordinary men was in times past answer i mean so and in this kind of revelation alone i willingly rest as in that which came by inspiration from god as long until i shall hear at his glorious coming that lively and most sweet voice of christ my saviour when he shall say to them who shall be at his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world to whom be all praise for ever amen to god only wise be praise through jesus christ for ever amen catechetical exposition of modes of revelation by robert rollock this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org